These two pictures need to merge. But for that to happen, there needs to be fresh thinking. Father Peter McBurney is a Jesuit priest living in Dublin. Many of you may have heard about him. You might often see him on the TV or in the newspapers. He's dedicated his life to caring for and looking after homeless boys and young teenagers. And he wrote recently, The Catholic Church in Ireland is in crisis, one of its own making, and one that isn't going to go away. The crisis goes much deeper, he says, than the actions of individual bishops in the Vatican. He says, without root and root and branch reform, the church as it currently exists in Ireland will die, and I will shed no tears. He goes on to say, I have received much from the church. I believe that the vision of Jesus is vitally important for our time, and that the church is the bearer of that vision, but not in its present form. Just very briefly. And it does have to be brief in the context in which we're gathered here tonight. I want to present to you some of the areas in which there needs to be change. Root and branch reform and fresh thinking. Firstly, in the manner by which bishops are appointed. And the way in which leadership and authority within the church is exercised. It's absolutely vital that we find ways in appointing and exercising leadership in the church which is much more inclusive of all of God's people and allows much more greater participation in the decision making by all of God's people. And that it become a leadership and authority which is seen to be much more Christ-like and of real service to God's people. And in particular there needs to be ways that are much more inclusive of women and that allow women to be seen to be active at the level of decision making, real decision making, and at the level of real leadership. That of course raises the question of the ordination of women. It's a complex question, but Church of the Moment teaches us that we're not even allowed to talk about that question. Many of you will have heard of Jennifer Seaman, the lady down in South Ireland, who called for a boycott of masses a couple of weeks ago. Arising out of her hurt, her feelings of hurt over the exclusion of women and the treatment of women in the church. Whatever you might think about her and her option of wanting to, to boycott class, there is no doubt that she articulated some of the huge hurt, the deep hurt that is felt by very many, many women as they feel excluded from leadership and decision making within the church. And that's a real issue. We need fresh thinking. Secondly, we're greatly challenged by the difficulty of holding on to the ideas of the beauty of what is at the core of Christian sexuality and hanging on to the ideal of Christian marriage as a sacramental and lifelong commitment of love. But on the other hand, we're challenged too to listen to and to understand and address the growing reality of people not getting married, living together, the breakdown of marriage, the numbers of people in second and third unions, and also the growing voice of, of gay people to be acknowledged and recognized and included and respected. There is so much that is beautiful and precious at the heart of a Christian understanding of sexuality, but much of it has been lost or poisoned by a language and by actions and by an obsession that seems to be judgmental and self-righteous and hurtful and demeaning and hypocritical and excluding of so many people. We need to find a new way and a new language in talking about Christian sexuality and we need to listen to the voices of all of God's people. There needs to be fresh thinking. Finally, with regard to ministry, we need to get away from the idea that ministry and leadership belong only to the ordained and the clerical ministry. God has gifted all of his people. And we are all gifted for ministry. And we've got to allow ways of not just allowing, but actively encouraging and appreciating and calling people, all of God's people, to making those gifts available for ministry within the church. Male-dominated clericalism, 
having lots of power needs to go. This is a time for fresh thinking. Of course, none of this will happen unless all of us make it happen. Not just me, or the bishops, or the monks, or the priests, but every single one of us, all of us. Of course, we're not alone. God's Holy Spirit within us. And that Holy Spirit will not be quiet. And Jesus has told us that He is with us always, even to the end of time. It is indeed 